Oh, you're gonna be funny. What's up with the gang? It's your boy, Josh, and it's Tuna, man. We're back another video, man. Today we got the final 48 hours of King Von. Final 48 hours. Is this like from the show? What? You know no, 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 no. No. Okay. If you're new, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow on Instagram. Up here, get us to 10k on Instagram, 100k on here. Let's get straight to the video. Gang. On November 6, 2020, King Von would be one of five people shot outside Monica Hookah Lounge in Atlanta. Dang, I don't even know five On November 6, 2020, King Von would be one of five people shot outside Monica Hookah Lounge in Atlanta. Is that when he died? Around 3.20 a.m., two groups of men began arguing outside, leading to gunfire. Two off-duty police officers were working security at the establishment that night, and they too engaged in the shootout. Because of this, a full investigation was conducted to see whether or not the Atlanta Police Department was involved in his death. See, when I go to Atlanta, I go to, there's this place called the Backstage. <laughs> I go on a Thursday. That way it ain't no foolishness. You just go in, you have a good time, get you some wings, and take your, take your behind home. Here's what they found retracing his steps for those last 48 hours. At first, I thought the police killed him. I break down the wood, I stuff it with Pat. On November 4th, 2020, King Von was in Atlanta, Georgia. He was celebrating the release of his Welcome to Oblock album that dropped just a few days prior. His career was peaking, and every day his music was being discovered by a new audience. There's no question he was about to be a superstar, yeah. but the biggest issue Vaughn faced at that time was himself. See, King Vaughn was from the infamous housing projects of Parkway Gardens on the south side of Chicago. Before ever stepping into a booth, he was already very active in the street life. He only decided to rap after beating a murder case in 2017. His reputation only made his music more real for listeners, leading to his blow up just one year after that. But it's important to realize when someone lives a life the way Vaughn did before fame, it can be hard to leave that mentality behind, even after finding a way out through music. Because of this, Vaughn had no issue when it came to things like beefing with other rappers. While in Atlanta, an ongoing issue between King Vaughn and rapper NBA Youngboy had been brewing for months. On November 4th, DJ Academics would invite Vaughn onto his podcast to publicly speak about their issues. During the conversation, Vaughn assured his fans that there was no real problem, and it was the internet just trying to make it more than what it was, unknowing at the time that in under 48 hours, this would all come to an end. Ain't no rap beef, and it ain't no real beef unless somebody got shot or someone. You know what people told me? People told me you and Youngboy was beefing or something like that. Now they said something about, that Yo, what happened? Von, what's going on with you, man? They be saying that a lot. It's like we got the same interests and, and, and holes. And, and then, you know how the internet will try to make it. Don't tell me I got problems over girls. No, it's the internet, gang. It's the, it's the you know? They try to make it like that because it's the internet. These issues have been See? escalating since a few months before. That boy, the thing about it is that that, that was one of the first one of y'all rappers that, that I started liking. Yeah. He was a storyteller. And and being able to draw pictures through storytelling is a is a is a art. It's a gift. This, and, he, and he had it. This right here, this young boy baby mama. This is his baby mama. Okay, it is really what I mean. It, hey, when pictures of King Von and NBA, between, something nothing in this world will get you killed quicker than messing around with somebody's. Nah, for you. Somebody was having, and how we having the trouble? Who? But this uh, rapper trouble, but Jania, Jania is fine. Buddy. You got the shoot. You got. It's all. It's been since the beginning of time. His ex girlfriend surfing. Two Sonic girl cheese. Fist online. From that point forward, the two rapper. The King Von and NBA Youngboy's ex-girlfriend surfaced online. From that point forward, the two rappers made it known they didn't like each other through a series of social media posts. With two artists this large going back and forth, it was only a matter of time before others got involved as well. Man. One of those people would be Quando Rondo, an artist and friend of NBA Youngboy. Yeah. Okay, well, Even well, though well, Von well. See, they used to be cool. They used to be cool. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. But but Quando Rondo, he, he was young boy. 
He looked like he keep up trouble though. He looked like he stayed getting in some junk in school. He funny that, though. That, that, that boy just looked bad. Cool at one point. Now they weren't. And it just so happens Quan was from Savannah, Georgia. Only a four hour drive from Atlanta. I'm saying no 63rd <laughs> Tell me he don't look like a mob. Quando funny. He, he remind me of a mob. On November 5th, King Vaughn woke up and gathered his entourage. This included himself, his manager, and 20 some others. Around 11 p.m., just five hours before his passing, they headed out to Opium Nightclub. Vaughn was set to make an appearance and promote his new project. He hopped into his bulletproof Hellcat, followed by eight other cars filled with friends and associates. Bulletproof. Around midnight, they arrived. By this time, his manager was taking notice that something was off with Vaughn that night. He couldn't put his finger on it, but he felt like he wasn't himself, almost like he knew. They stayed at Opium for a few hours where everyone appeared to be enjoying themselves. Fans would upload videos online of Vaughn in the club, and from the looks of it, everything seemed normal. But these would be the last videos of King Vaughn smiling we would see. Around 2 a.m., just two hours before his time of death, he gathered his crew and they left the venue. According to his manager, everybody thought they were headed back to the Airbnb, but somewhere on their way home, they lost track of Vaughn's car. After realizing they lost him, they began calling his phone to see where he went, as it was very unlike him to leave without saying anything. So, already confusion was already started. Because normally, if we got an after party, or we got anything we're going to, we know as a team. Everybody know to be on point. You know what I'm saying? We're traveling with a real deal gangster, a real step. So everybody gonna know how to move. You know what I'm saying? We're traveling with a real deal gangster, a real step. So everybody gonna know how to move. But from that night, I don't know what it was. Maybe he's got timing, I don't know what it was, but Vaughn completely went on his own course. His manager, and more importantly, his security, went with him everywhere. After calling, they found out he rerouted to an after-hours hookah lounge across town. A little before 3 a.m., Vaughn pulled up to Monaco, but decided to wait in his car while the rest of his entourage was still on their way. About 15 minutes went by, Vaughn still in his bulletproof vehicle staying warm. His manager, followed by six other cars, pulled up to the parking lot. He hopped in the car with Vaughn, and once again, he said he felt like he wasn't himself. They stayed in there while the rest of his entourage was wondering what was going on. It was a cold night, so they too decided to wait in their cars. After a few minutes of talking, his manager convinced Vaughn it was time to go inside. He let his security team know he was ready to enter, so they did their normal checkup. Around 3.15 a.m., security went into the club and checked it out to make sure it was clear of any threats. With Vaughn being a high-profile rapper, this was a standard procedure for them before entering any venue. They couldn't bring weapons in the club, so security left them in their cars. Right as they were about to walk in, one of Vaughn's friends alerted him that Quando Rondo was in a car just a few feet away. It's unknown if Vaughn got a tip from someone that night about Quando being at the club, or if it was just a coincidence that he rerouted his car to the exact location they would both be so at. So him and Rondo, it's, they're cool though, right? They was cool. At, at the point where... At, no, where, they weren't cool at, at this time. That's why I had, somebody told him, hey, Quando here. And Vaughn went over there and he... <clears throat> wow. Well, it just happened like that. But this could have also been the reason so Vaughn they, seemed off. What? Okay, I'm, I'm... I don't know why they started beefing. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't know. See that? Oh, oh, yeah, I don't know why they started beefing. Okay. It's possible it just happened like that. But this could have also been the reason Vaughn seemed off. Maybe he knew something no one else did. Normally Vaughn was calm, collective, and soft-spoken. Living the life he lived back in Chicago, he knew how to handle these situations. But on this night, Vaughn reacted before anyone could say or do anything. He immediately hopped out of his vehicle, jewelry on and all. Tell me, you see how many people behind him? This eye of him. Not knowing if Quando was alone or if he too had people with him. Only a few moments later, the two would come face to face and just like Vaughn spoke about before, it was on sight. He threw punches at Quando even before words could be exchanged. Others rushed over as the fight broke out. So well, Vaughn didn't know. So look, what they thinking, Kondo and them, what they thinking, he walked up, hit him. They see all them people following. What you thinking? They finna jump me. Right. I know the team, right. like, no, they not finna jump my cousin. See, so he just took off on him, just. Yeah, he just walked up and, huh, like, no words. Well, and then, I, I, I hate to say it, but uh, uh, a whole lot of folk that beef, especially, you know. I'm telling the people don't fight no more, though. 
They don't fight no more. I just I hate it. But but I mean, cats from Chicago, it, it, it'll jump off just like that. Vehicle Kwanda was standing next to had people from his crew inside. At 3.20 a.m., only a few seconds after the fight had started, a gunshot from only a few feet away went off, striking Vaughn in his side and catching him completely off guard. You can see the gunman, who we now know as Lil' Tim, coming out from behind the car and firing multiple shots. Vaughn got hit three to four times and his manager was also hit in the leg. The two off-duty police officers working security that night reacted immediately and they too fired shots into the crowd. But we can confirm now the shots that injured Vaughn came from Kwando's side and not the police officers. The police would hit three people in total, one of them being Lil' Tim. Vaughn laid in the street holding on to Kwando until Muop, one of Vaughn's good friends, broke up the fight. Oh, At 3.23 a.m., there were injuries on both sides. Oh, no. Instead of waiting for ambulances, their crews drugged their wounded into cars and sped off to the emergency room. According to those in the vehicle... Look, look, when you think, if somebody gets shot, you think they should wait for the ambulance or go? No. No. I don't, that's, that's, that's extra time. It's okay. like, if you close, go. Get, get your butt to the hospital as quick so as possible. So say like 15 minutes. If... Okay. I'm... I'm breaking, breaking traffic rules. I'm speeding. I'm driving. I'm driving my partner to the hospital. When y'all, matter of fact, it was either you, y'all, or Nadia. But 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 we broke all kinds of traffic laws getting out. You know, get to the hospital when her water broke. And matter of fact, we got an escort. But point being is that you get to you get to help as quickly as possible, especially something like that, because you know you never know how, how much time you have left. I, I've lost too many people. And, and stuff like that. And there's too many stories that I can tell uh, surrounding stuff like that. It's just, it's, it's sad. It's, it's really sad. On, he was still conscious throughout the ride, even telling one of his friends to calm oh, yeah, down. Yeah, 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 watch this part, watch this part. According to those in the vehicle with Vaughn, he was still conscious throughout the ride, even telling one of his friends to calm down that he was going to be okay. Around 3.32 a.m., just moments apart from each other, both crews would arrive at Grady Hospital, which was less than 10 ooh, minutes away. Ooh, ooh. They ain't both crews? Yeah, but they, they got to Grady. And when, when, when you're from Atlanta, um, people who are really originally from Atlanta, they call themselves, they're, they're Grady babies, because uh, that's a hospital in Atlanta where folk, you know, where folk, you know, it's one of the biggest hospitals there. And people call themselves Grady babies to, to signify that I'm from Atlanta, so... Mm. Yeah. Great, just that he was going to be okay. Around 3.32 a.m., just moments apart from each other, both crews would arrive at Grady Hospital, which was less than 10 minutes away. Quanta would start a live stream of himself helping Lil' Tim inside the building to try and protect himself in case Vaughn's people ran up on him. Come on, come on, come on, he's shot! Come on, come on, bit boy, you got the up. Come on. Cause I just keep breathing a bit, bro. Just keep breathing, cuz. But this wouldn't happen, and nobody else was hurt after the initial conflict at the lounge. Unfortunately, though, just after 4 a.m., King Vaughn, along with two others who were shot that night, would pass away to their wounds, taking his life and career far too soon. Lil' Tim was arrested in Grady Hospital, where he was treated for his wounds before being taken into custody. He posted bail the same day, and has since been awaiting trial for the murder of King Vaughn. He out now. Somebody, everybody got family. Somebody relate to him or he somebody kill now. him. You kill him. Like everybody that... mm, I don't know the fool. I didn't know who he out. He posted bail the same day and has since been awaiting trial for the murder of King that's, Vaughn. That's why young boy said they don't want to see little Tim jump from out that truck. He made that song. Mm. Oh, I don't remember that, but he I posted I bail the same day. And has since been awaiting trial for the murder of King Vaughn. Somebody kill somebody. Everybody got family. Somebody relate to him or somebody cool him. You kill him. Now everybody that, that he was close with is trying to kill you. It, it's a never ending. Or they gonna kill. Let's kill somebody close to him. It, it don't stop. Everybody, that. all the people that playing the game, it's it gone. Is. You know what I'm saying? It's it, the last man standing. It's either you gonna be in jail. You gonna die. Have to continue. I just, I'm not okay. First off, I'm not saying that I don't understand. I at the same time. Just because I understand doesn't mean that I condone it. It still it still ain't cool. It still ain't right. At the end of the day, we should be able to settle to settle our beefs, you know, without without somebody 
the hearts not beating. If you're new, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow the Instagram up here. Get us a 10k on Instagram, 100k on YouTube. If you ain't wearing no socks, subscribe, man. I just want to see us do better as 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 a race of humans. Y'all be safe, gang. Peace.